two types of non-international armed conflict must be distinguished. Low intensity non-international armed conflict and high intensity non-international armed conflict. Let's examine here the first category and begin with the text of Common Article 3, which states that it applies to armed conflict not of an international character occurring in the territory of one of the high contracting parties. This provision does not provide as such a definition of those conflicts. However, during the course of their work, it was necessary for the ICTY, ICTR and ICC to formulate a more precise definition. These courts and tribunals articulated two criteria in order to distinguish these non-international armed conflicts from less serious forms of violence that are not governed by IHL. For example, internal disturbances, intentions, riots or acts of banditry. The qualification depends firstly on the nature of the armed forces involved in the hostilities and secondly on the intensity of the armed violence. With regard to the actors involved in low intensity non-international armed conflict, two observations should be made. Firstly, low intensity non-international armed conflict include all hostilities where one or more non-governmental armed groups are involved. This includes scenarios where hostilities take place between governmental armed forces and armed groups, but also between two or more armed groups without any state forces. The question then arises, how do we identify armed groups? In order to be characterized as an armed group, an entity must be armed and possess a certain degree of organization. It is very difficult to produce an abstract definition of groups that meet these criteria. Indeed, in practice, we find an enormous range of groups that can be characterized as armed groups. Some possess extremely developed vertical structures, sometimes even quasi-state organizations. Hezbollah, active in Lebanon, is a good example of this type of armed group. Other groups are much more loosely organized, for example, those taking part in the hostilities in Congo, Mali or Yemen. In order to avoid the challenges arising from an abstract definition of the degree of organization needed, international courts and tribunals have adopted a flexible and inclusive approach in this regard. Thus, judicial bodies have looked at various concrete and non-cumulative indicia in order to qualify a group as sufficiently organized. Relevant indicia include considerations such as the existence of headquarters, design zones of operation, or the ability to procure, transport and distribute weapons. Groups that possess such characteristics display evidence, a common structure and the capacity to sustain military operations, therefore to respect minimal IHL norms. Let's underline here that, with the exception of liberation movement that we studied previously, no legitimacy conditions enters into play. In other words, to determine whether IHL applies, it does not matter whether states label the armed group a terrorist organization as long as such a group has acquired, I repeat, a certain level of organization and common structure and therefore the ability to respect and ensure respect of IHL. The second criterion concerns the intensity of violence. Again, international courts and tribunals have adopted a flexible approach taking various factors into account. Important considerations include the seriousness of the attacks and their frequency, the spread of armed clashes over territory and time, the collective character of the hostility, whether the government is obliged to use military force against the insurgent as opposed to police forces, whether various parties were able to operate from a territory under their control, an increase in the number of government forces, the mobilization of volunteers and the distribution of weapons among both parties to the conflict, as well as whether the conflict had attracted the attention of the United Nations Security Council and whether any resolution have been passed on the matter. It should be emphasized that not all criteria must be present. 
The decision is made on a case-by-case -case basis. The ICC and other hybrid tribunals have endorsed these considerations as being the key elements in determining whether a low-intensity non-international armed conflict is taking place. As such, there is strong evidence that they may be regarded as customary international law. It should finally be observed that, as the four Geneva Conventions have universally been ratified now, the requirement that the armed conflict must occur in the territory of one of the high contracting parties has lost its significance. Any armed conflict must necessarily take place on the territory of one of the parties to the Convention.